That gives us seven badges, I think. Yep. It just leaves one, but you know, before we can get the final badge, of course, there'll be the whole like Team Galactic arc that we have to do. And uh, that'll be, I guess that'll be what we work on. Uh, I guess we're just gonna work on Pokemon Platinum for a bit. And because uh, I've, I've made all, I did all these Halloween specials and I'm just waiting on them to really slowly over time. Um, I do want to do a stream Halloween day. I want to go in and try to get the uh, Rassalize Gengar. I want to do that event. Um, I don't know if we'll get it quickly or if it'll turn into a five hour headache. <laughs> um, I have raged at those in the past. I don't think I'll rage this time because I'm going in with like no, I'm going in with so low expectations that I don't think it'll bother me. I, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but like they recently added Dynamaxing to Pokemon Go. And they limited how many like particles you could collect in a day and everybody was like upset about it and said, well, this is mishandled. Then they went to release the Gigantamax uh, Pokemon separate and they waited like a month in between and then they mishandled that as well. Everybody on the internet is highly pissed off right now and highly upset um, because even on the game's splash screen, it says, we recommend a party of 10 to take on this Gigantamax Pokemon. But then I've seen like a thousand social media posts of people saying, we had 40 plus people and we couldn't fucking do it. Or 40 people. I don't know if you could do 40 plus. I don't know what the limit is. But I've seen people say they went in with 40 people to do the raid and they still couldn't beat the Gigantamax. So what, what hope do I have? Like, what hope do people in rural areas have? And I think that's been one of the largest, if not the largest, complaint about Pokemon Go since day one, since the game came out. Now, granted, to be fair, Niantic has, over the years, tried a little bit, at least, to make the game uh, playable for people in rural areas. Or rural. 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 Oh, God. My brain has turned to mush. Um, you know, they, they, they changed the way the game fundamentally worked about a year or two ago. So up, up until recently, like if I turned my game on where I live, cause I don't live in a big city or anything. I live in a very small place. Um, you know, I hell where I live, I'm surrounded by trees and woods and forests and shit. Um, so it's not like I live downtown Times Square where there's a bajillion Pokemon uh, gems and stuff. Um, but I would turn my game on and there'd just be no wild Pokemon here. Then about a year or two ago or three, I don't remember how long ago it was, Niantic announced, well, we're going to change that up so that there are more Pokemon encounters everywhere you go not just in rural areas but like everywhere you go in the game you want to make sure that there's an abundance of wild pokemon that you can choose from and uh, i do applaud them for trying uh to make that work now here's the thing i have talked so much shit about niantic and i'm starting to get a little worried I don't think it's the case, but I'm afraid that it might be another Game Freak situation where I shat on Game Freak now for a while, and it turns out that Game Freak um, has kind of been neutered by the Pokemon company. Now, if you're not aware of how that works, Game Freak is the parent company who made Pokemon. But when Pokemon became such a huge global cultural phenomenon in the late 90s and early 2000s they created a company called the pokemon company now that company handles everything from the anime to merchandising advertising it's the top company and then like game freak is under that now so turns out from this big terra leak that happened recently you know people hacked game freak servers and we found a shit ton of information. Projects that have been canceled, beta sprites, story elements that have been scrapped from games, movies that have been scrapped, movie ideas, future projects. I hear somebody even has a build, a playable build of Legend ZA that's due to come out on the Switch next year. So it was just this huge, 
catastrophe for Game Freak. But do you know what it did? Do you know what we saw? Do you want to know what the real like gem of information was that we got out of that leak? Was the fact that Game Freak has tried for decades to make really fun, really enjoyable Pokemon games. And do you know who's been neutering the fuck out of Game Freak? The Pokemon Company. Because they don't give a flying fuck whether the game is polished. The Pokemon Company doesn't give a shit whether the game is fun. All they want is to make sure that there is a goddamn game on the shelf every year that has the word Pokemon written on it. They don't give a rat's ass whether the game is good or not. It uh, They don't give Game Freak enough time to be creative, time to work on projects, none of that, none of that. Pokemon went full Call of Duty where they were just releasing a new game every year. A new game, new game, new game every year without a doubt, without a rest, without a break. And you can't do that and still be creative at the same time. You can't do that and make a good product at the same time. So I'm worried that I've shot on Game Freak for so long and it turns out that it some of it's their fault, but most of it's the Pokemon company's fault because fucking capitalism. I'm worried that Niantic might be the same way. I'm worried that one day I might learn that Niantic was actually trying behind the scenes. Like their dev, the devs and the dev teams were working hard to make the game great, but through no fault of their own, there was some sort of corporate bullshit group think of like, well, we got to have a product. We got to have this. We got to have that. Of course, with Pokemon Go, it's the same game. So you're not releasing a new one every year like you are with Pokemon. But it feels like there might be some group think or committee think now on Pokemon Go as to where, well, we need we need a, an event for Halloween. We need an event for Christmas. We need an event for New Year's. We need an event for spring, fall, summer. Uh, uh, the uh, the Cinco Muertes. We need a uh, 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 Columbus Day. We we National Hot Dog Day. It feels like Game Freak is now putting out a set of research for every fucking like day on the calendar that's some sort of like noted event. And for a while it was fun because we were just getting nonstop like events for the game. But then they started paywalling everything. Started off innocent enough, 99 cents here, a dollar there. Okay, you need to pay to keep the game going, you know. Um, you have to pay the devs and the people who are actually getting up and going to work every day. So I understand charging a dollar or so for the research from time to time. Then they got greedy. Then the research started being $4, like $4.99. Then it felt like every day there was another $4.99, $4.99, $4.99. $4 now, for the sake of argument, I'm going to open Pokemon Go right now, and I'm going to show you what the current prices are for paid events and researches. Oh, and there's not any free research anymore. Very rarely is any of the research free. It uh, It's very much gotten to the point where all of the research is being put behind a paywall. Okay, you have the Pokemon Go Max Out event for... four dollars and 99 cents okay you have the costume party premium timed research for a dollar 99 oh now it's focused that's two researches on the board at the same time that's paid <laughs> here's here's the, here's the big one Pokemon Go Wild Area Global Ticket. Okay, let me get the camera to do its thing. It'll focus in in a minute. Give it a minute to focus. Give it a minute to focus. You see that? I know it's blurry a little bit, but can you see that? Focus. Eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine. Then there are the other issues with the game. There's the fact that so many people have just stopped playing. 
Um, it makes it hard to join raids. It makes it hard to get lucky trades. It makes it hard to play the game in general. A lot of gems will just sit for weeks or months at a time without your Pokemon being returned. Um, and this is a problem everywhere. That's not just happening here. So I think Pokemon Go is on its last legs. Um, they mishandle every event, every release. And despite the fact that there are a shit ton of Pokemon from X and Y that haven't been released, there's a shit ton of Pokemon from Sword and Shield that haven't been released, from Scarlet and Violet that have been have not yet been released. And instead of releasing these Pokemon through, uh, you know, in the wild or through major events, they're just putting them out piecemeal. Just one fucking new Pokemon every year. We just got more Pekka. And instead of making it easy to get more Pekka was a little more on the difficult side. It was behind research that's behind the, they put it in the, the battling, the Go Battle League. Now they did make some free research available, um, which kind of counters what I've been sitting here talking about. But you only got like one or two at best more Pekka out of that. So people who want to get like a three star or one that's halfway decent for battling or for people like me who want one to keep and one to send to home to finish the living decks or the, the Pokedex at home, it could be problematic if I only get the one more Pekka. And I've noticed that they're doing that with a lot of Pokemon recently. They're not just releasing them into the wild as new releases. They're putting them behind special stuff Rotom is a good example. Rotom was released years ago. He, he was very briefly in the game. And then every once in a while, they'll release a new Rotom form and they'll put it behind some sort of event. But right now, I can't get Rotom. Not only do I not have Rotom in Pokemon Go, but I don't have an extra one to send home to fill in the data for it. So it's, it's very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Um, there is also a huge, huge problem outside of everything I've mentioned. I've noticed that on social media, if you had the audacity, if you had the balls, the, 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 the nerve to go against Niantic and say anything remotely disparaging about them, all the simps are going to come out of the woodworks and attack the fuck out of you because it's happened to me. It's happened to other people I've seen make comments on threads and, and blue sky and social media. There are simps out there who are just going full blown jackass over Niantic and protecting their dumbass decisions. So not only is all this happening with Pokemon Go, it's become incredibly, incredibly difficult to chastise Niantic for any of their decisions because people who are super wrapped up with this this gotcha game with this fucking money making app they're so apologetic towards it that they don't want to hear you criticize it in any way shape fashion or form so that's a huge secondary problem that's going on with pokemon go is that apparently you're not allowed to have an opinion anymore no matter how uh correct your opinion might happen to be but we'll see where it goes. You know, we still have the Nintendo side. We still have all the retro Pokemon games that we could play. We still have a Legends, uh, our Legends ZA coming out next year. So there's still plenty of positive, fun things to look forward to. And with Pokemon, it's just very unfortunate the Pokemon Go ended up where it is today. Because it used to be such a fun little game. It, it, you know, it, it really gave me the opportunity to get out and socialize when I normally and ordinarily wouldn't do, I wouldn't get out and do that. Because where I live, I kind of live in, in bumfuck nowhere. Um, the city in which I live is nothing but just fast foods, fast food chains, and a Walmart. We don't have any kind of, of activities here for you to do. There's no entertainment, like there's no entertainment industry here where I live. So Pokemon Go has always been literally the only thing to do. That's it. Uh, we don't have a theater. We don't have anything. We have a bowling alley that's pretty shoddy and falling apart, and that's about it. Uh, we have an ATV park for, for rich white people to get out and ride their four-wheelers in, in the wilderness. And... Uh, uh, those two things might be the only thing we have here. Um, it sucks. It really sucks. 
So, you know, over the past eight years, I've kind of used Pokemon Go as a means to go out and socialize. And Niantic ruined that and ran the fucker into the ground. So, and you're probably thinking, well, Eric, you're doing all this bitching. Why don't you just stop playing it? If you're not having fun and you have all these problems, why don't you stop playing it? I'd love to, except for there's one teeny little problem with that. They do the version, they do the exclusives like Meltan and Gimme Ghoul. And that ties back into the Nintendo side. If I don't have an active Pokemon Go account to where I can get those exclusives, Pokemon Go exclusives, then I won't be able to send them to home and use them on the Switch side. See what I'm saying? So I've kept Pokemon Go on my phone this whole time, just in case. Now, I took a huge break from Pokemon Go over the last year. The game's been on life support for me. I turn it on rarely. But in the past month, I've been making an attempt. I've been getting out, putting in the gyms again, trying to keep up with the research. Trying, I've been actively trying to resuscitate it and see if I can fit it into my life again. And uh, right now, I'm kind of in a wait and see position. We will see what happens. Because this, this Gigantamax debacle is a global fuck up. It's not just Eric complaining. It's not just a few people complaining. Millions of people worldwide are complaining about how Gigantamax has been handled by Niantic. Now, I think what we'll see is I think we're going to see some changes. I think that they're go probably going to overhaul how the mechanics work. But it is also Niantic. So we do have to kind of entertain the thought that they might not. There's a strong possibility they might just say fuck you and fix nothing. But that's going to do it for today's episode. This was a good one. This was a damn good stream. I was, I was here. I was present for the first hour and a half. Uh, till the brain fog kicked in. Uh, we made it all the way through the route. We fought a handful of trainers. We made it to Snow Point City. We got another badge. Um, you know, the, I guess the next big story element for Pokemon Platinum here in our playthrough is going to be tackling the Team Galactic stuff. So we'll work on that between now and uh, when we uh, do our season finale. I'm, I think we might just make Pokemon Platinum our main focus. We're just going to focus solely on this and get her done, as the Red Decks say. All right. See you, folks.